paper and what television has seen both his name and his face frequently before you. But we're delighted to welcome you here and uh, we're very grateful to you for agreeing to present you. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that Mr. Fabric wants to say something to you uh, when the walls have been distributed, and I'm sure you'll hear what have to say. Um, before that, uh, Mr. Bid, after two years, David, uh, again, is well known to you all, and I'm certainly not going to uh, describe him. He's well known to you now as a headmaster here, and has clearly made his mark on the school, and uh, he also, as I know, wants to review some of the uh, highlights of the, of the school year. The, um, the presentations we are making tonight are really the culmination of months, many months of hard work by both students concerned and the staff. And I think it's proper that I should take this opportunity to express our thanks to them all for the very great efforts that they have made over the past years, uh, which have culminated in probably one of our most successful years in examination and academic honours that we've had. And I know that all the government <laughs> wish to share in that tribute to you. Uh, before uh, I move on to the next part, I wonder if I can verge on being contentious. Uh, over the past few years, we have seen many changes to the education system. Now, we've had three major education acts. There's a white paper which precedes yet another one. And while the staff and the governors have worked very hard to absorb and integrate these developments, we would ask if perhaps you could use your influence when you're back in the house to ask if the rate of change, we don't want to stop change, but if the rate of change could be eased a little so that each new innovation can be, as it were, digested before the next one descends upon us. But with that thought then, can I then ask you, David, to take over the proceedings? Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Seven awards. If the students involved would kindly come up to the stage in the small groups that I announce. The first set of awards are contribution to the school community. The second set is outstanding per personal achievement. For year seven, contribution to the school community, Leanne Hartley and Aaron Mahan. Year 8, Contribution to the School Community, Paul Woolrich, an outstanding personal achievement. <laughs> Year 9, Contribution to the School Community, Adrian Rathbone, an outstanding personal achievement. The next set of awards have not arrived in school yet, so would the people involved be kind enough to come out to be congratulated by Mr. Fabrican? And this, the following students in 91-92 achieved the Community Sports Leaders Award, and they are Mark Bryant, Neil Wicks, Rachel Clark, Vicky Chapman.
was a week before the general election, and it was at this very hall that we had the uh, debate, which Netherstow School has made into one of those famous events in Litchfield. And I think that's the great thing about Netherstow School, incidentally, as David was saying earlier on, the school is important primarily because of what it does for its young people, but it's also important because of the contribution it makes to the community. And that debate was just one small contribution that it made. But you know, I can think of no more important task than rewarding endeavour, as we've been doing this evening. To recognise endeavour in anyone is important, but to celebrate endeavour in the young is of vital importance for all our futures. The youth of our community are the foundations on which the society of tomorrow will be built. And for a child to develop into a well-balanced adult who will be a credit to their community, they need a well-rounded education. And I've had the privilege of visiting Everstow School, if not on this platform, since the fateful day of April the 2nd. And David's taken me around the uh, school, and I have no doubt that the school uh, has made a tremendous impact, not only on its pupils, but also on the people who work here. You know, I taught for a year before I went up to university, and uh, I've taken the chairman of the governors, Mr. Silverthorne's comments to heart, and I promise you that I will be saying to the Secretary of State, John Patton, to just calm down or just slow down on some of the changes that we're making. But the changes that we've made are important because the national curriculum assures parents, and it assures children as well, that they will get a good core founding education. I don't think there's been a problem actually in Litchville or indeed in Staffordshire, but I can tell you in certain parts of the country, in times gone by, some schools have put more emphasis on peace studies than on reading, writing and arithmetic, the very things that you really do need to know if you're going to get on in life. And testing too has been a problem, but testing provides a, an assurance that both children and, dare I say it, and teachers are maintaining standards throughout a child's year.